Okay. It's a lot of giggling. We're live. Hi. Why is that look on your face? Because though? it's giggling. I don't know if it's giggling just to show people we get along great. I'm, I'm actual giggling. I'm the Peter Friedman of Stars in the House. Peter with that nervous giggle. Oh, nervous that's what it is. Okay. Really cute. Did you guys see that when during Heidi Chronicles, the screen went black, and then I came on to interview Peter, and the interview was like this. Oh, my God. Tell me all about Rag Time. You did it for two years. It was great. <laughs> Tell me about Succession. I'm obsessed with that show. <laughs> it was literally just giggling and saying it was great. Where were we? Um, uh, I'm James Wesley. I'm Seth Rudetsky. Hi, guys. This is Stars in the House. What is Stars? By the way, I look like I'm wearing my pajamas, which I kind of am. Um, You're wearing jeans. Stars in the House. It's twice a day, 2 p.m., 8 p.m. It's a fundraiser for the Actors Fund. And so people just watch. You can just watch and totally enjoy, or you can donate. And $5 is the minimum. Or both. Or both, please God. Um, so what is the Actors Fund? It's such a misnomer. And to this day, so many people don't know what it is. The Actors Fund is for everyone. That's why it's called the Actors Fund for everyone. Actors, mm -hmm. singers, dancers, anybody on stage, but also anybody backstage. But then on top of that, anybody that just has to do with it, like people in the box office, publicists, uh, casting directors, the smallest little theaters in your neighborhood, they can all look to the Actors Fund. As long fund as you're a professional in the performing arts, yeah, that's, that's the Actors Fund. Wedding singer. That's right. So... Between, and by the way, go to actorsfund.org. By the way, Julie doesn't remember that our show is at two o'clock. No, she remembers. She too. Bye. <laughs> you can't do it two shows in a row. There's it's, one it's, hour to not come in the been kitchen. It's twenty-three days under one roof. We're actually lucky. It's this is show number thirty-nine, Seth, not including the two plays in the house. So it's like forty-one total. Mm -hmm. We're actually kind of lucky that it's only been like the last two episodes that we want. That she's play. ruined. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So we we have been getting, there comes the nervous yeah okay so you got to cut I want to I want to say between yesterday's play Tale of the Allergist wife hold on um Gavin yes, yes the link is starsinthehouse.com starsinthehouse.com Gavin's asking if there's um, a link he can post I posted able to it read his lips yeah wow I posted by the way I'm able to read where you just wrote right there oh that's it's true oh idea. David make sure you send Dr Lapook the link because I don't see. I don't see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this show's falling apart. We're so tired. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're so tired. Oh, my anyway, God. I, by the way, the, the this is, this Gavin, check out, laughter. check out the photo I posted to promote you on the show. I found basically a new shot of you. Like, any way to get oh an audience. Gosh. It's basically new. But I was like, you know what? People are going to come. It's all good. As I was saying, oh, between yesterday's play and last night's appearance by Kristen Chenoweth, $7,134.58 was donated. Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah. Just yesterday. yesterday for a grand total of over $149,000 for the Actors Fund. Isn't that a brava? And it's not like we're getting crazy corporate sponsorship. We're really just asking for, you know, people doing 5, 10, 20, and people just literally look at this. Oh, my gosh. And donate, guys. And this could be you. Wait, how did you turn this here? I'm just trying to get people oh to donate, man. Anything. Um, okay. What I want to read. I want to. Oh read. yeah, listen. Yes, Stokes is supposed to be here today. Stokes can't be here. You know, Stokes is the CEO of the Actors Fund. Absolutely not. He's the chairman of the God board. Damn it! It's Joe, all the same words. You're not, uh, Joe Benacosta is the CEO Absolutely and president. Not. Is that is what we're <laughs> What does the CEO do versus the chairman of the board? It's such a big difference. Uh, okay, Absolutely okay. not. No. <laughs> Anyway, oh my gosh, it's gonna be one of those days. <laughs> the point is, he has a meeting for the Actors Fund. They're oh. giving out so much money. They so he's he's going so many times. He's gonna be back this week. Okay, go. Okay, this is from mm -hmm. this is an email we get. This is from Lynn Manuel. Well. Oh. No, can you pronounce that last name? It's from Lynn. By the way, it's spelled like Lynn Manuel. Lynn hyphen and we don't need the last name Lynn and something. That's something. because you can't pronounce it either. Hi, Seth and James. Thank you so much for making these episodes. I am absolutely loving them. I am a doctor in Perth, Australia, and it makes me feel connected to the things I love. My sister is in London, UK, and we are discussing all the episodes. Now, nice. Keep up the good work. I, P.S. I would love Lynn. P.S. I donated yesterday. Lynn. From Australia. Yeah, so, but my only issue is Lynn spelled favorite wrong. There's no you in favorite. I'm so sorry. All right. What am I sorry I about? think we need to bring on... Our first a guest? Tony Award. Oh talk. no, with the handle. What? Oh well, it so says Seth up there, and you didn't do it. Okay, so two things. First of all, the the thing you're watching right now, just put the address bar wherever you're watching it. Put it on your Facebook and your Twitter. Just say watch, because the more people that watch, the more people that are going to feel good. And second of all, the more people that can donate. So please just share wherever you can, because so many people still don't know about it. 
Second of all, right. can you just like tweet us, just like follow us everywhere because it's going to help. So and share, share this link. And you know, this is going to live on the Stars in the House website as well as the Actors Fund. YouTube yeah, we found channel. out, we found out we get a lot of donations between like midnight, what are the times? Between like 6 a.m. or between something midnight like and 6 because people watch all over the world and that's their like normal time to watch because it's right. like 12 hour difference. Right. Um, so just, and that's our social handles. Anyway, that's the end of the story. So we're bringing now him on. Now we can bring him on. We're bringing him on. Um, you know him. <laughs> What the? You know him as this, but we know him today oh as this. Hi, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> He's a monster. <laughs> I am a monster. I haven't showered in like six days and shaving, but I did do this. This is my new favorite thing. Wow. You're here. First of all, where, nice. do you, where do you happen to have nail polish in your house? I went to the grocery store. I, I finally left the house. Uh, I went to the grocery store a day ago, so it was after five days after my fever and everything left, uh, just to be safe. And then I went to the grocery store, and the first thing I went to was the cosmetic store <laughs> because I'm determined to have a little fun by myself. Wait, for someone who hasn't shot, I've never seen hair look more stunning. Is that a lace front? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. A, I have a costume closet and a bunch of wigs. Um, and I am, I am gonna. The next thing I'm doing, I just spent like over. I spent a little money. I haven't spent any money. All I buy is food, so it's so nice to actually weirdly not spend money it's very com comforting even though nothing's coming in it's fine but um right. I, uh, I bought a bunch of stuff for hair dye and i'm gonna do some stuff to my hair my buddy, my buddy maddie wilson who uh, cuts my hair um uh, we met on hello dolly he is gonna walk me through it and we're gonna do like uh, a big session i'm gonna do something i've always wanted to do uh, all right don't go too far because right now it looks amazing you'll come back and you'll show us Gavin. i'll come back yeah i'll come back but you'll hate it you'll hate it Actually, wait, i like it can you do the kind of thing where like you begin the show, like you could do your hair dye throughout the show so we can keep checking in on you like every 10 minutes? The show would have to be like 18 hours long for what I'm gonna do. That long to put a pink streak in your damn hair? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something drastic. Okay, we'll do some sort of little video and then we can show it. And then yeah, yeah, I will. Maybe I could do a time. I'll do, I, I see what you're saying. I'll, I'll put my phone up, put it on time lapse and then I'll just do the whole thing. Perfect. Yeah, queen. Okay. Okay. Gavin. You said oh, yesterday you went out for the first time. I and did, yes. Yeah. How long had you not? Well, let's go back. Like, people okay, go people don't know. So okay, Gavin okay. had coronavirus. You definitely yeah. know, right? I want to talk about this. Um, th my friend Kate Baldwin, who I love and think is can hang the moon, um, she just wrote me and she said, you know, I have a friend who she's not going to name that that also, like she sent me the list of, of his uh, symptoms by the day. It almost lined up exactly to what I went through. Loss of taste and smell, a headache, fever, chills, night sweats. I got diarrhea one day randomly. I was like, what is this? And they said- Oh, that was the one day you texted me that I had to know about. And we go on. <laughs> that was the one- no, I, know, I know you care about my GI issues. Um, but the thing that I noticed was um, something he's mentioned, and in case it might be interesting for you to talk about, is what I felt is this weird shame because I did not get tested officially. Because when I, when I started feeling these symptoms, I was like, oh crap, do I have this thing? I, of course, called my doctor and my doctor said, we have to assume based on what you're telling me that you have it, can you breathe? And I'm like, yeah, my breathing's fine. Do you have tightness in your chest? I said, no, I, I don't have that. And I, thankfully, I never had that. I had all the other stuff. Um, so I'm really lucky. I had a mild case, I, I would say, but I felt like crap for like 16 days. Wow. And he said, if you can't breathe, if you can't breathe, you call the emergency, the 911 and you come in. But otherwise, stay away. You're putting people at jeopardy. He said, it's the same treatment. Otherwise, you have to quarantine yourself. I was in the UK doing waitress. so, And I've since found out that like seven or eight of my cast members have the same symptoms. They have not been able to get tested because they're in the UK. Um, uh, and, and one of the women that I was in the show with uh, did go for a, a test in New Rochelle because she lived near there. And she called me on Friday and was like, I tested positive. And I was with her the whole time. you know. So I was like... But there is this stigma. There's two things of stigma that I have found. One is that, and I know this comes with any disease or, or virus or anything, people getting sick, and we don't try to do it. And I've done it. But there's like, you've done something wrong. You know what I mean? Like you did a bad thing somehow and you're bad now. And I'm like, crap, I need to amend that. Going forward, like these weird things you do with certain types of people who get sick and I, we actually need to lean towards them safely to help rather than like avoid. And the other stigma is that because I wasn't officially tested that I might be lying or I might, 
I might be full of crap or, and, and I'll tell you, my doctor said, if you want peace of mind, we can maybe do a test for you. But if that's all it's for, I want to encourage you to keep me safe, keep the staff safe, keep everybody just stay. And I was like, that makes sense. That makes sense. But I am going to hopefully get the antibodies test and, and to make sure, because if I am, if I am immune, then I want to see where I can help or, or, but they also don't know for sure. Is Dr. LaPook on? Yeah, he's going to come on. He'll stay on. Yeah, and he'll come on. You can ask him, sure. I would love for, you know, I would love for people to, A, if we can talk about what I've gone through, friends of mine have gone through, whatever, just to try to also, we read about ventilators and, and I've heard horrifying stories, but I keep reading the vast majority of people who will get it, and there are going to be a lot of people who get it, will have symptoms like I did, like have flu-like mild or medium flu-like symptoms. It sucks. It's not fun. I don't feel great. But we may not be headed towards ventilator hell, even though I have had friends who I know and, I, and I'm concerned for them and praying for them and talking to them and checking in. It's just something to, I, I can at least stand and just say, I've gone through this and it sucks, but, you know. Hey, Gavin. So you mentioned that there were a number of members of your waitress cast so that yeah. you're you're saying that so i'm guessing that you think that you got it while you were actually in london yeah because i i mean i flew home they wouldn't let us off the plane until we handed them this flyer that we had to fill out answered like a list of questions and they took our temperature one of those temperature guns and i didn't have a temperature that day and the next night i got a temperature and i was like thank god because what they i don't i don't know what they would have done they might have put me in a and like probably in a private quarantine or something at the airport, or I don't know. And my dog was on a plane the next day to come home. And oh, I'm so lucky. Um, but then I got home and then I started getting this weird cough and it was non-productive. And I was like, this is weird. Do I have acid reflux? Cause I have acid reflux. And then I just thank God that I didn't, I wasn't symptomatic when I got off the plane. Cause I, I don't know what would have happened. So, so I guess what I'm trying to get at is how many days do you think it was from the time that you were infected? And I know there's no way you can know, but you probably know the minimum, you know, from like you last saw the cast to when you had the fever. Well, to be honest, there was the possibility that there were some people in our company that hadn't been feeling well and were trying to do their best to isolate. Um, uh, we had, you know, whatever. We had a couple instances where it was a little bit spooky, but nothing, nothing intentional obviously because nobody we knew so much less than we know now and that was three weeks ago it's wow. crazy that people are like how could you have done i said because three weeks ago i had i was perfectly healthy and as far as i knew i even stood we were going to do a closing night party and i mm -hmm. i made an executive decision to the cast and i was like you guys i've been thinking about this and if you're all okay we were standing at our last warm-up in a circle and i said let's not go there's this ironically, this club, this amazing club in London called Hospital. It used to be an old women's hospital and they turned into a nightclub and we were going to go and go have drinks after because no, the government wasn't talking about it over there in this way. They were a lot later. And and uh, I said, let's not go to hospital tonight. Let's just have closed because they weren't letting any more guests backstage. At that point, we were still doing the show. Let's just do it in uh, the biggest dressing room we can get in. And let's have closed door. No one here is symptomatic, so clearly no one's sick. That's as much as I knew at the time. Everyone feels fine. So we were we all brought booze down and we drank and no one came up and it was just us and no one was sick in the room. And the whole time I was there, the woman that tested positive, five days later, on Friday, she she tested on she got the test done on Tuesday, and on Friday she called me and said I'm I tested positive. And I'm isolating. I've been isolating since they told us to do that. But it was just, I would say, maybe a few days, you so, know. Wait a minute, Gavin. So did you got, did you leave Waitress before, like, West End was yeah. closed? Yeah. We, we, uh, Sarah and I heard about this, the first travel ban that Trump did not put any. He just said, we're closing the borders to Europe. And the UK was exempt at that point. The UK has since, since been closed. Right. But, but there was no mention of Americans can still come home. We were like, and it's going to happen at this time on whatever. And we just thought the UK is exempt now. There's no chance the UK is going to stay exempt. Right. We, we can't be a stranded in the UK with no health care away from our families. Everything we said, we have to go home. And we had one more week of the shows to do. And at that point, the West End was still open. So in other words, you didn't you didn't leave because you had like, inside knowledge or, or suspicion that anyone was sick. You were just like, I get home. 
the inside knowledge that we had was Sarah and I sitting in her kitchen with her sister and going, oh, hell no, we're going home. <laughs> and we and then we called the producers. And of course, the producers are like, because they didn't know either. They were like, think about the message this could send. And if you if you flee, and it was so new. And we were like, we understand. And then a day later, they were like, oh, yeah, we're getting you on a plane. So they, they, they fell oh. in very quickly. And we're like, and then the other woman who was there, our friend Natasha, who was there, she was she was hired for just three weeks and then she decided she was playing Becky after our, our friend Marisha left and then she, a, a day later she was going to be on the plane and and we were fine and we, and we got on the plane and nobody was on the plane and wow we were right by the exit door so we got off and we heard four to eight hour lines at the at the at, at it was three minutes in customs oh, and we were in our car 10 minutes after getting our bags and we were home I spent one night at my apartment asymptomatic as much as I knew and then the next day I left and came up to upstate. I have a little cabin upstate. Thank God I'm the luckiest man alive. Um, and I've been here because they told us to stay for 14 days. And that day, the next day, I started feeling kind of crappy. And then the end of that week, my building was told that there was a person who had tested or who had, was, supposed, was showing symptoms. And it, I will, I'll say, and, and I was proud of my building, but also it felt a little like you know, I was cursed and, and I'd done something wrong. And I, I talked to the president of the board and she was lovely. And our super was isolating because he had come close contact and elbow bump with me because we weren't touching each other. But again, we didn't know anything. And what we did know was what we were operating on. Just like a week ago, we didn't think that masks are stupid and they're not going to do anything. And now, you know, I was at the grocery store looking like a bandit with my Playtex rubber gloves and my mask singing to the Muzak with like avoiding people down the hallway. It's just, it's crazy. What's your advice for people right now that have it or isolating like you? Like, like what would have helped you that you didn't do or what did help you that you should do? Um, Tylenol, no ibuprofen. Apparently we're not supposed to take ibuprofen. Although I've heard that that may not be true. I just stuck with Tylenol cause it worked. Mm -hmm. Um, the headache was the biggest, the two biggest things for me were my headache, which I still have this dull headache behind my eyes and across the back of my head, which is, ne I've never had a headache this long. So that's why I'm like, okay, I think something's going on. Wow. But the other thing um, was my loss of smell and taste was really unnerving and claustrophobic. I, I, I woke up one morning and I was almost in, like, I, I was having trouble calming myself down because I could not, air is coming in your nose and you're like, I'm holding garlic and cinnamon up and I can't tell the difference with my eyes closed. And, and I'm like, I'm breathing, but I can't smell and I'm eating, but I can't. And I've never lost my taste of smell or sense, uh, senses before. And I, my friend was like, Oh, you're totally going to take that for granted in like two weeks. And I'm going to pray that every day I wake up and I smell my dog's farts and I just go, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> how long did you have? When, how, how soon? Nine, nine days. Nine days. I got my first symptom on Monday and Thursday I was like eating chicken and, and something. And I thought, I can't taste this. Can I taste this? Eating piece of broccoli. I, does broccoli taste like anything? I can't remember. And then I started eating things and I was like, I don't, I don't taste anything. And then I, and, and, and there also wasn't that New York times article at that time about anything. So we weren't even talking about it. And now it's still, they're saying, there's no scientific proof. I was listening to this thing on NPR the other day, and then we still don't have the scientific proof that that is an actual marker. And almost, almost every single one of my friends who have had all these things have said, I don't, I can't taste anything. I can't smell anything. Some haven't, some haven't, but, um, you know, it's, wow. it's nuts. And then, and then I, and I got it, started getting it a little bit back and it's coming back more and more about nine days, nine or 10 days later. It is also new. Um, the, the one thing that I think uh, helped you and that what Dr. Poop keeps saying is that you've got to keep in touch with your friends. Like the social isolation mm. is so upsetting. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that you, of course, keep in touch with your friends. So here is your pal just to say hey to you. Come no on. way! Wait, is she, is she is there? Is she <laughs> That's here. Wait, <laughs> she's muted and her hair dryer is awfully high. Why is that so high? Is that well, so we can't both. We wanted you to see her dress, her bedroom, just because. <laughs> she's isolating from well, us. <laughs> what I meant to say was, we want you to keep in touch with your friends, I friends that you start and throw the modern Millie with. I'm yeah. talking about exactly. No way. <laughs> Yes. Oh. 
Are you? He's 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 literally masking in his own house. He doesn't trust himself. I don't trust you, dude. Hi, but I, you can't get it through the computer. I'm totally kidding. I know. Mark. How are how you, are you man? man? I'm okay. How are you feeling? Honestly, it's so wild listening to you tell that story because you know, I, I, Shannon and I have gone under the belief the entire time that this has all been happening, that if we all just behave as though we had the virus, yeah, that we would get through this quicker because we would be taking care of each other. So regardless, we've been wearing masks. Thanks to my wife. Thanks to Shannon for jumping on that from the beginning. <laughs> and we've been wearing masks. We've been quarantining. It's the same thing that you experienced. Like, you know, we had just opened Girl from the North Country. Oh. See, she's doing Hi. it. How are you? Love you. She's doing it. <laughs> and like, and we were the same as you. Nobody, well, no one seemed sick. And then we heard about, uh, we heard about uh, that, that, that usher that had it yeah, yeah. at the booth theater. And then, you know, we were all like, all right, this is inevitable. And, you know, we need to do something about this. And of course, sooner rather than later. And I thank Cuomo for jumping on it the way that he did. And we all, because there was no preparation. Like you said, nobody knew anything. We didn't know what to do. We were asking and all the producers wanted to keep pushing forward. So when the conversations began um, and we were asking the question of what are we going to do? Uh, and then Cuomo answered that question for us, which I'm very grateful that he did. But none of us felt like, and then later, like you, I've been fine, I think. I mean, have you have you felt, like a lot of my friends, I don't know if you heard your friends too, Mark, have been like, I think I might've had this in January or February. And then they tell me their symptoms and I'm like, I think you may have, you know? Well, that's the thing. It's hard to tell because you know as well as I do in this period of time, everyone gets sick anyway because of allergies, because you're exhausted from opening a show if that's yeah. what you're doing or you're that's in it eight shows a week. And then yeah. everybody in the, in, in this, in the uh, industry and in the community is getting sick. And so you're already trying to avoid certain people or certain shows. Like um, I remember the big thing before the corona was becoming you know, a real conversation was, if you know anyone in the workshop of uh, the music man, stay away from them because they've got really bad flus. I had heard Sutton and Hugh just had really bad flus. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, so, and she might have already had it, you know? Exactly. So yeah. there's a, and, and you know, I know this. I know that there is no way that I did not brush the virus at some point. There's just no possible right. way because yeah. we were all around each other. Uh, we were keeping clean at the theater, but obviously you're on stage with each other. And so there's stage yeah. activity and all of that. So you're going through your business. You're trying to be careful when you walk out the stage door, mm -hmm. but you know that you're brushing it and yeah. none of us knew. So there's a part of me that thinks I may have already brushed with it in a mild way mm -hmm. and not even known that that was the case. And maybe you're immune. That's what everyone is hoping that we all had it and now we're immune. Do, is Dr. Cook able to speak to that? Is he around yeah. yet? We're going to talk. We're going to go to Dr. Cook right after this. So Kudish, because Gavin, your voice is shot. I'm having Kudish sing a song. <laughs> I'm here to pinch it. That's honestly why I'm here. The weird I thing love is, it. I love it. Come on, baby. Everybody that wanted to hear Gavin sing, and that's me included, you're going to have to settle for. Uh, I'll, be I'll be back when my voice is haggard to hear. Yeah. All right. So peace out, Gavin, and peace out, this couple. I love seeing him. All right. I really do. For everybody out there, I hope that you know that even though we have to social distance, that doesn't mean that we um, are alone or that we have to um, not be in contact with each other. So here's a song that I love very much, uh, given the fact that I'm a girl from the North Country. On pause right now, this is a song that was uh, something that Bob Dylan sang a lot back in the 60s, and uh, I think uh, it's very potent today. Um, uh, this is not the song that you thought I was going to sing, Seth, but it's a song that you've heard me do, and uh, I think you enjoyed it. So here we go. Paul and Silas were bound in jail Had no money for to go no bail Keep your eyes on the prize And hold on 
Yeah, Paul and Silas thought they was lost. Then that dungeon shook and those chains, they come off. Keep your eyes on the prize. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Well, I got my hand on the gospel plow. Won't take nothing for my journey now. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. The only chain that a man can stand is a chain with man holding hand to hand. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Now the only thing that we did was wrong. Staying in the wilderness for far too long. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. The only thing that we did was right. Was the day we started this fight. Keep your eyes on the prize. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I ain't been to heaven, but I've been told The streets up there are paved with gold Keep your eyes on the prize Oh Yeah, hold on. Still got it. And look who's applauding you, Dr. La Pook. Dr. La Pook. Beautiful. That's great. And my phone is ringing. It'll stop. That was amazing, Mark. That's great. Oh, Mark, thanks. you still got it. Girl from North Country will come back. What do we have to ask Dr. LaPook? Gavin, anything? Or Dr. LaPook, you have an update for us? Um, well, I'll just start off. I had a teacher, one of my mentors, Al Markowitz, and he said, if you let people talk long enough, they'll actually tell you what's the matter. And uh, it was all about listening. And Gavin, that was such a beautiful, eloquent description of what you've been going through, both medically, psychologically, psychosocially, Every which way. I wish that, well, it is recorded. I would show that to medical students because yeah. um, not only did you go over sort of your symptoms in a beautiful, eloquent way, but you nailed this whole issue of stigma. Um, and, you know, every time I was speaking to an epidemiologist, he said, you know, every time there's been an outbreak for thousands of years, they have blamed somebody. They've thrown somebody in the fire. They've thrown somebody off a cliff. Everybody always wants to blame somebody, point the finger at somebody. I remember in Ebola, um, people from West Africa was were stigmatized, uh, you know, when when that fear was was so rampant. And now, of course, we're seeing a lot of um, racism uh, against people from Asia that's going on. But now you feel it even just, uh, and again, as you said so beautifully, that was I. So the subtext to me that I heard was, was I being responsible? Um, but we didn't know that you could have asymptomatic spread. You could see yeah. changes for a day or two before you actually had symptoms, which is behind, by the way, the recommendation of the bandana or the cloth, cloth, the homemade. It's not that you're going to be protected so much of it. I mean, it may give you a little bit of partial... Although you're holding up, Mark, I think a surgical mask, but the ones that are homemade, which are not as good as that, um, if you sneeze, then the droplet may be caught in it. But um, 
you know, all of the public health figures, Tony Fauci and the Surgeon General and you name it, they want to make sure that people don't have this false sense of security that you're wearing this bandana and uh, you're somehow protected from You still have to do all the other stuff. You have to be six feet away and you have to sneeze into the crook of your arm and yeah. you know, wash your hands. But if you happen to be going to a store and you can't be six feet away, it's a reasonable thing to do. Not so much to protect you, but to protect others. It's the equivalent of walking around like this all the time. It's the equivalent right. of the crook of your arm in your nose. Can but I ask a point about how do you know whether somebody's holding up a store or just wearing a bandana? Uh, yeah. I, I like to think that I have the potential for anything because I'm an actor. I don't know. Uh, I want to ask. I want to ask you something. Is something I haven't had to think about that I wonder if you could talk about is the coming home from the store. I bought hundreds of dollars worth of groceries so that I don't have to go back. What am I supposed to do? Like, what do I need to do? If like I would talk, calling my friends, like, do I have to like wipe down every single thing, every banana, every whatever? I'm just curious, like, what you could say to that. At this moment, I know, obviously, you may get a call from the CDC tomorrow, and they'll be like, hey, tell him to wipe down his bananas. That sounded dirty, but you know what I mean. I, I, I know what you mean. And this is, we've talked about this a few times. This is sort of, this has the, the risk of going down the rabbit hole, right, of okay. going down. And, you know, I think what I'm doing is, so you, the current assumption is assume everybody has coronavirus. All right, so what does that mean? It means the person who handed you your bag has coronavirus. It means you put it in the bag, well, the person who put the bananas on the shelf might have had coronavirus. How long can it last? If it lasts like a day on paper or cardboard, longer on hard plastic and feel like a couple of days. So assume it's there. So you come back with the bag, you, you're outside your door, you take the bag, you take the stuff out of the bag, you throw out the bag. Now you've got all the stuff. I think it's a reasonable thing to wipe it down with a, you know, one of those alcohol things or whatever you have to disinfect. You don't have that. Just a little, little soap. Water. With soap. Um, how far do you go? You know, you go as far as you can go without making yourself nuts, right? Okay. Uh, but I think um, the, the key thing is that after you've done all that, wash your hands. Because now you have to assume, you have to think like an epidemiologist. You have to think like an infectious diseases person. So now you wash your hands for 20 seconds. This membrane, this fatty membrane of the virus, it, it just dissolves like that with soap and water. Also with 50% alcohol or more. So you're doing that hand, and then, again, we all touch our mouth, nose, and eyes, but you keep your, your hand, even if you have a little virus on your hand, if you don't touch your mouth, nose, or eyes, it's not going to get into you, but we all do that, so wash your hands. So after you're done with the whole rigmarole, whatever it is that you've decided to do, wash your hands, wipe off services, you must be you must be like so tired of saying wash your no, hands no, everybody. You know what? Um, I, I, I have to say it over and over and over again because this stuff is not intuitively obvious. It really isn't. Um, the nice empowering thing is that washing hands. I mean, it sounds so simple because your mother told you to do that. So how how good could it be? Everything I've said this before. Pretty much everything I teach in I'm, I've been I've been a doctor almost in May it'll be forty years, and I'm an oh. intern gastroenterologist. And after all the ups and downs and all the fads, pretty much my advice is what your mother could have told me. Mm. You know, go out and play, eat your fruits and vegetables, uh, get plenty of sleep, be kind, which has medicinal value. Let them uh. come here. Um, so, yeah, so just because it's easy to do doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Also, thank you for, thank you, Seth and James, for doing this. And then Dr. Lepuk, like for coming on and Mark for singing so beautifully. But like having having a doctor present in these in this is is everything because there's this thing when you get further away from the truth, you start to write your own truths, and then you start yeah. to spin into this space. Right. Of, oh my gosh! Well, if it's on my thing, then maybe I should. Maybe it, it could be it could be on the plant that I just touched. Now it's in my and, and, and it's so easy for all it's all to spin into. You know, I just thought about coronavirus. I have it, you know, like it's. Right. And that's why, you know, there's that expression, you, it's better to give, to, rather than giving somebody a fish, teach them how to fish. So yeah. rather than saying, here's what you need to know, right. I'm trying to give people the logic so they can figure it out. Let's see, how do you get it? You get it from droplets. Uh, the virus is in the droplets. Um, you touch the droplets, then you touch. So people start to understand how you get it. There's a little bit of it that may be aerosolized. That's why we're worried about hospital workers 
who are doing intubation, putting in breathing tubes, and there's a lot of aerosolization. Right. I, 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 can I ask a question about that? I'd heard that, I, again, I don't know what to believe anymore because I've heard it from multiple sources, but like the majority of us are getting it from this to this. That it being in the air or being, you would have to be near somebody for a while. Is that true or is yeah. that? So again, based on previous epidemics and outbreaks, um, what usually drives these outbreaks uh, is the droplet spread. And think about it. How many times does somebody sneeze in your face? Right. Not very often, right? So it, right. these droplets fall down, you touch, you know, think in the subway. You know, you, you touch surfaces and then we, we do, we all do it. We all touch our, so yes, that's the driver in the past. I interviewed Tony Fauci back in January, I think the end of January about this. What a guy, right? What a guy. And he said, you know, I, I asked him about asymptomatic spread. He said, it's usually not the driver of epidemics, but you know, you have the stuff that's on the, uh, on the cruise ship. Uh, and it turned out that I don't know, a quarter of people were asymptomatic and had virus. And so I think this is the new, Coronavirus. Right. Remember that coronavirus is a family of viruses, and a, they included in them are the common cold. About a third of the cases of the common cold belong to coronavirus. It ain't the common cold. This is a different type of coronavirus. But um, you know, we do have an experience with it, uh, and we're finding out these little wrinkles. We know that in the past, from other respiratory viruses, you can lose taste and smell. So it's not brand new. When you said, you know, is this something that's real? Yeah, it's real. That's it. I mean, I've I've had now way more than 30 patients with COVID. And I've had a ton of people with the loss of smell. That is, that's one of the symptoms. But yesterday I spoke to a friend of mine who came out of the hospital and said, John, everybody, I see so many people with clotting disorders. They're getting clots in their lungs, clots in their legs. So gosh, that's a little unusual. But you know, so we're learning, there may be neurological symptoms that are associated. Mm -hmm. We have to constantly be recalibrating and you said it beautifully Ed, when you were talking about what well, we didn't know back then, and now we're learning. And you just, you, as a doctor, you cannot have any ego. I'll finish with this. If you've been a doctor for five years and you have any hubris left in your body, you are in the wrong profession. Mm -hmm. Well, I was a doctor on the West End and Broadway, a gynecologist. And I just have to say, I still have that hubris. I'm, I'm just going to say, no, I'm kidding. Take care. So <laughs> you tonight at eight o'clock. Gavin, you're on your way out too. Thank you, okay. Luke. But wait, Gavin, before you go, let yeah. us have the anti-climax we've all been waiting for. <laughs> oh my God, Celia's here. Hi. Hi, but Celia. Wait, okay, hold on. It's totally, it's totally my she fault. Oh. There she goes. There she goes. I was like, Celia, you're not on until 2.30. And then at 2.20, I was like, Celia, bad. So anyway, it's my fault. <laughs> All right, so guys, catch up. Celia, let's just hear one good story about Gavin Creel from college. Go. Oh, gosh. oh dear. Well, from college. Um, oh, what college are them? What are you shocked well, about? One. So we, um, the University of Michigan decided in Gavin's senior year to do the musical West Side Story. And it seemed pretty clear that it was only going to be for one person and that that person was named Gavin Creel. And all of the underclassmen were like, I can't wait to see Gavin play Tony and Maria, Tony and West Side Story. And, and Maria, and Maria. And Maria. <laughs> and so this was like all the buzz. People are talking, people are talking. Who's going to be everybody else? Gavin decides, I don't know when. He was like, I'm not doing, I'm not doing West Side Story. I want to direct so typical, so typical Gavin. I've got to have my hair long for the college of fall. I hate musicals. Drives me crazy. Go on. So he's like, I'm not going to do West Side Story. I'm going to direct Pippin. And lucky for me, he did, because it was the first time that I was ever cast at the University of Michigan. She played Catherine. She was amazing. A, Tony Ward. <laughs> B, Celia, we have to bring you back for a full show. Gavin, you have to come back when you can sing. But let me just say, show oh. one, some, one thing about Gavin. We were all on a vacation in Mexico, me, James, and Gavin. So my first thing is, this is called upstaging. James and I were like, let's have a romantic photo of ourselves. Okay, look where Gavin is. Who the hell? <laughs> Why the hell is he in back? Then I'm like, Gavin, please take a photo of me and James. He takes like 20 seconds. I'm like, what is taking so long for this photo? That's because there wasn't a photo of me and James. He did this instead. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta love that. You gotta love that burst thing. Just press. I it don't on. have to love it. Okay, Gavin. <laughs> Kudish, we're running late, so we're gonna bring you back next time. We're That's okay. fine. Wait one second yeah. before we go. I just want to say, Celia, it's great to see you. Please love the John. He's amazing.
Gavin, you know how much I love you. And that picture you. you have of me, you know I now have one of you. So be okay. careful. Okay, yes, I Okay. Know. Not a word, not a word. I love you guys. <laughs> Next time. All right, bye, Seals. Bye, Gavala. Bye, bye, bye. Let me take a picture of, uh, you know, this, the video of your hair. Of your hair. To come back. I will, I will. I'll do it, I'll do it. All right. I love you. Thank you for coming back. You're adorable. Okay, here she is. You know her as Elle Woods, but I know her as being ruthless. <laughs> Please welcome oh Laura gosh. Bell Fundy. <laughs> yes, queen. Hi. Hi. Ooh, kind of the same fun. shirt. Same shirt. Yeah, we do. We're wearing the same color. You're wearing the Kentucky same. colors. Okay, where are you located right now filming? Um, I am in what we call the casita, which is a converted garage in my house. That... It, well, that's the wine fridge you see. Yes. Oh, right, right. there. Got, yeah. got the wine fridge. This is uh, that's the door that goes outside. It's kind of a mess in here, but it's where the modem is, and so it's a little closer to the Wi-Fi. Um, we don't mind. And I also I didn't want to wake up my baby, so he's awake now, though. <laughs> in California, you got space. Okay, so Gavin was talking about his experience with Corona. How similar did that sound to your experience? Besides making your hair look amazing. Oh, well, I did my face and my hair for you, and I put on a bra, but I'm still wearing the shirt I slept in last night. <laughs> so, so anyway, you know, that's how it goes. That's how, like, Corona is. Just, you know, who cares? Hair and makeup. I've done more, like, social media posts without, and I'm like, screw this. I'm not wearing makeup again. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the symptoms were very similar to uh, Gavin's symptoms. And I also lost my sense of smell, but that didn't come till quite like, I mean, maybe 10 days after I had had my first symptom. Wow. And my first symptom was a headache and chills. And you know, I get headaches sometimes. I actually thought I was hungover. Um, <laughs> yeah, I also get hungover. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, uh, so I just thought, you know, I'm, uh, I'm hungover and I couldn't, I just couldn't kick this headache. And then I started getting chills in my body and I was like, that's kind of weird. And I happened to have acupuncture that day and I have like a standing weekly acupuncture appointment and, and she took, she felt my pulse and she, she goes, Hmm, are you having like any like swollen limbs or anything? And I'm like, no, but I'm having some chills. And she's like, okay, okay. And she gave me a treatment. It was kind of like, I could just tell by the way that she said this to me, like, oh, uh, something's up. So she did the, the treatment. She did some cupping. And then she sent me home with these, like, viral support herbs, which are, like, like dirt. I mean, it tastes like the forest floor. Um, mm -hmm. And then she also – I would always – I also always take this uh, supplement called Broad Spectrum they have, like when I have cold flu. She goes, you know what? You could just go ahead and start taking the Broad Spectrum now. And then if you develop anything like a sore throat tomorrow, um, or if you develop a sore throat or anything like that, as it, if symptoms continue, um, you can maybe take uh, a dose of the herbs. So I, um, I ended up getting a sore throat the next day. And I continued to have the chills. So I began to take the herbs. And then like two days after that, I got this like crazy feeling of like tightness, like almost like putting a weight here. And like, I noticed sometimes intermittently, not all the time that like, it was difficult to take a breath. And, um, or like I'd be talking uh, really rapidly and then have to go. And a lot of people at the time, you know, cause we were in quarantine, that was March 12th. Uh, my husband and I opted to quarantine prior to like the okay. the um, regulated quarantine, right, right. and um, that was the first day I had symptoms. Um, but everybody was like saying, "Hey, can you send us a video of you singing? Can you can you do this? We're going to post this for Actors Fund. We're going to do this." And so I was singing my little face off, okay, oh and I was like, what? "Something is just feeling a little weird, like." Why is this a little bit harder sometimes, not all the time? Um, and I continue to take the herbs, continue to take the broad spectrum, and a week goes by. And my husband and I are doing walks, and he starts to feel like outside. We're like avoiding people, like with the baby stroller. And um, that's literally the only thing that we're doing. And uh, we start talking, he starts getting symptoms too. And I just decided to call the doctor 
Right. And I, and explain, I'm like, I'm having these symptoms. And they said, you know what? We have tests. We don't want to test everybody, but considering you have a pre-existing heart condition, we're going to test you. So a lot of people were like, how the hell did you get a test? Right. Um, uh, I have, I was born with a hole in my heart and I had it repaired in 2015. And so it's, you know, something you know, with lungs and related to the heart. It's always, um, for me, I have to check these things out. Right. So they tested me and that was Friday. I think that was the 19th or the 20th. I don't remember. And, um, and the following Monday, I got the call that I had it. Now, between the time on Friday that I took the test and Monday that I got the results, I had no symptoms over the weekend. Nothing. Wow. And I thought exactly what Gavin thought. I got acid reflux. That's what this tightness is. That's what that kind of like burning thing feeling is right here. It's acid reflux because I have had acid reflux. You know, I mean, all the singers that go through the bouts of the things that, you know, and that's the thing, like I'm so in touch with my body because I notice every little thing that could possibly be wrong when you're a performer, you just notice like the tiniest little thing that's out of whack because you're trying to stay ahead of it to not let it manifest into something worse. Um, whether that's, you know, a, you know, a back tweak or whatever, you're just always trying to stay ahead of it and especially for colds and flus. So my protocol was always, I was taking more vitamins and herbs and supplements than they had in the entire vitamin shop or whole foods. Like I, it was amazing. It's just so, yeah, the symptoms were very similar. But what I have had, it felt like they, it would go away and then it would come back again. And I don't know if that's because I was treating it with these herbs. Mm. Um, and it was, um, um, and, and kind of like it, it was improving and keeping my case from getting really bad. Um, but I was out of the woods, so to speak. I was, I, <laughs> I was out of the woods because it had been like three weeks since I had my first symptom. So you would think, but I was still having some like chest tightness. And so, so I'm not sure the length of which this virus really stays in the body. Right. So I decided to go to the hospital because I was worried that I had some sort of lung fibrosis that was developing. I mean, I literally was like in a total panic. Well, actually I'll show, this is when you stand in the pool, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I love, by the way, is that she's, I said, I've never seen someone with Corona be more lighthearted, literally lighthearted, <laughs> and do air quotes with gloves on. So here we go. <laughs> hey, don't freak out. I'm at the hospital. Um, I'm at the hospital because this is the only way that I could get an x-ray to make sure that, that I didn't have any fibrosis on the lungs or a walking pneumonia because I've had some shortness of breath and like a, like a kind of thing last night. Kind of thing last night. So I'm just back checking, back out, so I'm just checking out whether, out whether, see like whether or not a, I have like um, uh, uh, complications, complications from COVID. From COVID. Well, Even though I'm not technically infectious anymore, I might have some walking pneumonia. So I'm checking that out. Uh, this is so fucking crazy. But yes, I will do that on Sunday. Happy to do that. Um, you're amazing. And uh, yeah, see you then. This was a couple of days ago. It was a couple of days ago that you sent that. Yeah. Oh, and I have to tell you about the hospital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, first of all, I just I'll tell you what happens. I think did because I couldn't quite. I didn't hear the video, but I might have said that I got when I went in. Well, let me just tell you the story. Yeah. So I go to the hospital, and I don't want to go to the hospital. Well, so you haven't been scared to go. I did not want to go to the hospital. Right. I've been avoiding it for days. My doctor gave me a doctor's order to get an X-ray, but. Every place that I called, every imaging place was like, you got Corona? You can't come here. You know, like, it was just like, you, there's that phrase, like, they avoided me like the plague. <laughs> they avoided me like Corona. Like, that's the new one. Okay? Yeah, Gavin, so, yeah, that's so true. I know. I could, so, like, literally, I, I just sent Gavin a text, and I was like, well, I'll hang out with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your friend. <laughs> Anybody who's had Corona, we'll all get together. Um, we actually might be the safest people for people to be around. Yeah, yeah. Once, once we're cleared and we get, like, I'm going to get the antibodies test. And if it shows that I have the antibodies in the body and I'm immune to it and I'm no longer. Um, Susceptible. And I don't, it may not contagious, I guess, five days after you've had a fever. Hmm. Um, but I never had a high temperature. Okay, the entire time. Did you have a fever like that? Did you ever have a fever like him? 
I had I had chills and I had night sweats. Exactly what he had. Exactly. But I never had a temperature that went over ninety nine. Wow. And then I I'm all, I even had low temperatures. I even had like ninety seven. Yeah. So now again, I was taking all these like herbs that are supposed to cool temperature and do all mm -hmm. kinds of things, you know. But so that could be why if I hadn't taken anything, I could have had a temperature through the roof. So I don't know. Right. Um. So. Excellent. I I go, so the hospital. Uh, I don't want to go. I just want to go to like an imaging place, be in and out, not spend like all damn day at the hospital. And I'm worried about getting home to my baby. Um, but I had this one night, right? After days of, of like trying to figure out how I was going to get this x-ray to see if there was like cytokines or fibrosis on the lungs. Um, I, ha I, I felt this really intense pressure on my chest and some crazy back pain, crazy back pain. And then it started to move around and it came around to the front of my ribs and it was about 11 o'clock at night. And I, and you know that I was afraid to fall asleep. I was afraid that if I fell asleep, I would stop breathing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a horrible feeling. So I was like, somebody give me some sleeping pills. Yeah. <laughs> There's some Xanax around here. But I was just so anxious. And my husband was like, you're okay. You're okay. We can go to the hospital right now. And I'm like, if I go to the hospital right now, I won't get any sleep. And that could probably be worse. I just, I'm going to have to like, so I started to do like, try to meditate. I took some melatonin, which I actually heard was helpful in regards to the antioxidant quality. Uh, who knows all this crap we're hearing, but um, <clears throat> Dr. LaPook might know. Um, but anyway, so I decided the next morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go. And I go thinking it's going to be crowded. It's going to take me all day to get through. I show up. There's a stop sign at the door to the ER. And it was like, stop. And the door opens and there's a nurse there. And I look behind him to the waiting room and there is not a soul in the waiting room of the Huntington Hospital in Pasadena, a big, big hospital, not a soul. And the receptionist is at the front desk over there. And she's like, why are you here? And I said, I've tested positive for COVID-19. It's been uh, like two weeks since I've had a fever, but I have some lung fibrosis. I just want to, I mean, I want to check out and get an x-ray to see if I have some lung fibrosis. And they're like, okay, address, date of birth. And she's yelling at me from all the way over there. They do my vitals at the door. They check my blood pressure. They check my temperature. They check my oxygen, all of which takes about three minutes. And they go, put her in room 41. I was in a room within five minutes of arriving wow. at the hospital and there was no one in the waiting room. Yeah. So I just found it to be totally fascinating because everything that you're seeing on the news and, and it's just telling you like it's it, the hospitals overflow. Now that depends on where you are, right? Like mm -hmm. I think New York is, it's very problematic. It is. Um, but here, I think what's happened is less people are on the road. There's less car accidents. There's there's less accidents from people hiking. There's a lot of less thing, things going on. Um, so when I got in, which was also funny, the doc, they like shut the door to the room and they talked to me through the glass and then they called me on the phone. The doctor called me on the phone. But then this nurse came in, did blood work, a blood panel. They did an EKG on me. They took the x-ray. And, and I just was overwhelmed with like my sense of gratitude mm. for these hospital workers who are literally risking their lives, right. literally risking their lives to take care of me in that moment. And it made me so emotional. Um, and I, I just kept saying, oh, you're so brave. You're so brave. And this nurse was like, he was making jokes. He had this hazmat suit with like the HEPA filter. And he's like, I am your father. You know, he's like making like Darth Vader jokes. And I'm like, wow. He hasn't, he hasn't been in the same place as his family. He's been living in an apartment separate from them. So he doesn't infect them. He says that um, he knows he's going to get it because he's been exposed to it. And right. he goes, it's just a matter of time. And he goes, and <clears throat> goes, but I will tell you that the majority of people who come in here have minor symptoms. And if they were reporting every single person who had this and every single person was getting tested, we might see less fatalities than the right. flu. 
Um, and that was just this nurse's opinion. And I thought, well, that's interesting because here's the thing, like Gavin is a perfect example. They didn't want to give him a test. He had it. He had all the symptoms. Right. My husband, they didn't want to give my husband a test. He had it. He had all the symptoms. But we are going to do the test to find out if we have the antibodies, which will yes. also show that whether we've had it. And then I'll probably donate the plasma or do, you know, the thingy. Um, I think it's what we I, really I can give you guys my breast milk. Apparently, I make antibodies that way too. <laughs> We're gonna hold off on that. <laughs> but um, first of all, literally like a week ago, I told you about being on the show, and you're like, I think I can make it. Like, why are you in the midst of all this? So, like, you have a show must go on attitude. That's because you've been performing since you've been eight years old. Second of all, I just want to say that we keep saying it's very important to keep in touch with good friends, even if you're distant. So here's one of your pals. Well, you were kind of enemies, but in the show. <laughs> but in real life, your pals. Where's Marissa Hello. 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 Oh, my God. I was like, Sarah, I will drive things to your house. I said, I have eggs. I won't tell anybody what I have. I'm like, I've stored up for months. I was telling Laura, I was like, I will give you whatever you need, but don't tell anybody it came from me. <laughs> You are not driving to her hey, damn house. Girl, how are you? Girl. No, I would. I would have dropped stuff off at the door and then left. Okay. But I, but I, I know. have all the things. Wait, Marissa, I, I know. Not just bring a lace front. But the question is, how much is your hair right now? I never know. Oh, no, this is, this is, this is. Why am I like weirdly on? Is it just that I'm the it's, Oh, they, ah. There you go. <laughs> Grandma, all this friggin' zooming and. I feel like I'm a great, I'm literally like, hold on, do I do it on my phone or my iPad and Zeb? I'm like, I'm crazy. Um, this, is, this is me, because it's all blonde. This is me. This is not me. This is my Wait, you're blonde now? Yeah, here, look. Because, right, because I went to the place on like the, you know, like the third and was like, dye my hair blonde because we're going to be home forever. <laughs> Uh, that's me. Oh, wow. Looking good, girl. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I haven't left my house since March third, y'all. You know what? That's finally where your where your social um, phobias have paid off. Well, I saw you. Wait, Marissa, we saw you. Second. Yeah, we we did the Margot Lion memorial, and Marissa was like freaking out about having a fly. I'm really glad that it all worked out. And everyone made fun of me. We were all together. So you did it. You were very kind. And and Betty Buckley was very kind. And I like went in, Laura, and I saw the I walk into the class and Laura will find this funny because it sort of was like how I was during hairspray. But I walk on stage and everybody's like, Marissa. And I'm like, nobody touch me. Nobody come near me. I'm like, oh my God, no, you have corona. I was freaking out. This was on March 2nd. And I cried. I didn't go. I was so scared to go. And like Everyone's like, oh, it's Marissa. Like everybody was like, oh, here we go. I'm like, no, y'all, you're not taking this seriously. Yeah. And like Jerry had just flown in and Pat had just flown in from England. And I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And everyone made fun of me. And then I stood in the back of the stage and like waited till the show was over. And it was like, see you at the party. I was like, see you there. I got in my bag, went to the airport. I was like, I'm not going to a party. <laughs> Screw you all. I was like so mad at everybody for making fun of me. And then well, Marissa, you have asthma. It's like it's dangerous for you to get it. I have I have asthma and because of like where my because I had cancer, blah blah blah. I had a lot of lymph nodes removed. So my like immune system's already screwed. Wait, by the way, biggest laugh of the day, you having cancer. Laura's literally can't stop laughing. <laughs> well, she said blah blah blah. No, no, no. She's she had like, a hole in her heart. She had to like run at me with a hole in her heart. Like okay, with a hole in her heart and you're breastfeeding. No, you know what? You win. Fine. I did that 20 years ago. She wins. She's got corona and a hole in her heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm dropping this right now. I'm, I'm ending this show with two videos. So oh. first, I want to show Marissa's sassafras. So I had Marissa oh. come guest star. I love, Laura. I have what? I love you. Oh, there it is. I love you too so much. Catch up later. So <laughs> when, we, when we were doing Disaster on Broadway, I had Marissa make oh, a guest appearance. Gosh. We did a number from Hairspray, and I just want to show how Marissa how hilarious she is that, how theatrical she is. This we were gonna do without love, and Marissa came on stage in a full winter coat. Watch this. In Act 2, Marissa sang the song. She wore a super sexy outfit, and she actually still has the outfit. Marissa Jarrett, no, would you please give a reveal? Yeah. Yeah.
work. Okay. <laughs> before the, before the, oh, my where is that dress right now? In my closet. Of course. Uh, I, wore, I wore Welcome to the 60s last night for my family. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to read, we always get a couple of donations. We have just like the last five, seven donations we're going to just read out. By the way, keep donating, guys. To, uh, stars of the house .com, Then I have one more video to show That's you. That's right. Okay, we want to thank Mark from California who donated $25. Jamie from Florida, $50. Mark from Wisconsin, $100. Alexandra from Quebec, Vincent, $25. Mara from Pennsylvania, $35. Gerald from Virginia, $25. RNC from California, $100. And uh, just a few that came in. Actually, I forgot to read them at the beginning. Emily from Virginia yesterday gave last night gave two hundred and fifty five dollars, and Andrew from New York a hundred dollars. Yeah, very much. All for the actors. We can, they keep flowing in, but we we haven't stopped for it. So I want right. to show you the final video, Marissa. This is this is the other time we did Hair's Great Disaster, but you weren't in New York. But I'm showing this so we can we can all make fun of somebody. Laura <laughs> Bell, you were there. And, oh no. No, you're good. No, we're gonna make fun of anybody. We're gonna make fun of a fellow castmate and how quick Jackie Hoffman, so Jackie Hoffman was not in disaster, but she was in the audience. We brought her up to sing the song. Here, watch the sass. Once upon a time, I I really appreciate that. Right, we're doing an official hairspray reunion. So both of you guys are going to come back for that. We're just picking a date. We're waiting until the corona is gone. We're waiting until Marissa will stop making jokes about cancer. And then we're all going to get together. <laughs> and we're here. Look at my babies. Oh. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So, Laura, you feel better. Marissa, the hair is amazing. We're going to roll our final credits that Jack Plotnick made. Before we say goodbye, where are the final credits? Oh, there they are. Here's our final credits. Here we go. And <laughs> hit it, Marissa. So, I didn't even get to sing. The credits started rolling. I was My like, hands are washed. <laughs> okay, guys. Tonight, eight o'clock. Title of show. The whole okay. title of show is going to be here tomorrow. Here, we'll, we'll, we'll bring Colin this over. Donald. That's right. Hold on. We have our. We have one of our doggies right here, Marissa. You can put the camera on your. Oh. Baby. And we're going to end broadcast and.